Today I'm going to create a variation on the classic detergent bottle using power surfacing in SolidWorks. There are a couple of different methods you can use to get started, but for this one I'm going to start directly in the Power Surfacing tab, Creation Tools, and Create Box. This automatically creates a new part file. The box primitive is centered on the top plane at the origin point. I want my box shaped control mesh to be 10 by 8 by 6, so I'll type in the size and then accept to go into edit mode. The default display mode is sub D plus cage. The more subdivisions you have, the closer the sub D resembles the control mesh. So until I've added a few more loops, I'm going to toggle control mesh display mode on in the viewing section. I'll start by selecting the top face of my box and scaling it in on the world Z axis. Since I'm in select any mode, I can hover over an edge, double click it in the center to select the edge ring, and then from the right click menu, choose insert loops. I need a couple of loops, so I'll use the increment value gizmo and drag up in the viewport to increase them to two, then right click to accept. Back on top, I'll select the two outer faces by holding the control key down, then switch to the A key while pulling the Y axis of the triad up for a quick extrude. While I'm there, I'll scale them in a bit. And move the front edge back to start to define the slope where the spout will go. I'm going to need one more loop at the back. For edges, if I hold the A key down and hover over an edge, I get a preview of the loop to be inserted, and then I can click where I want it. It's important to remember that the sub-D edges will not end up where the control mesh edges are, so there's no reason to try to be exact at this stage. Now I'll switch to just face mode while I make the handle. I want the front of my handle to flow back from the spout, so I'll extrude using the A key and rotate the top face a bit. Then, using the local coordinate system, I'll scale it in a little and extrude again. Next, I'll extrude the back piece to match. After selecting my two faces, I'll pick Bridge from the right-click menu and Accept. This time I'll use the familiar green check mark. I'll select the new faces and scale them in. Just to show you what a few extra loops can do to the shape, I'll switch to sub D plus cage for a minute. The body of the gas can is still pretty rounded near the base. So I'll select my edge rings and use insert loop again, and set the loop count to 2. But this time I'm going to set the pinch loops to 50, to spread them apart so the sub-D is pushed out closer to the control mesh cage. And right click to finish. Now I'll select the sub-D display mode from the viewing section. To get the inset area, I need to drop one more loop near the front of the model. I'll do this using the A key again. Now I'll select the interfaces, and from the right click menu, select Hard Edge to give it a weight of 100%. Next I want to use Offset Loop, also from the right-click menu. And once again, I'll add an edge weight to my selection with Hard Edge. Weighted edges will be retained on conversion, allowing you to add fillets or chamfers. I need to scale the offsets in first. Let's go ahead and make the conversion. From here, I can make a new sketch for the spout. I'm using a line to get the angle to create a plane on. And then creating a circle to extrude for the spout. I want a nice big fillet where it connects to the sub-D body. And then some fillets around the hard edges for the inset.
Next, I'll add a shell of about 0.1 thickness. And then I'll check out the result with section view. I might want to go back and make some minor adjustments to the body. I'll click on my power body to get edit feature and return to edit mode. From the advanced section, I'll turn on soft selection, grab the bottom vertices, increase the distance, and scale, and convert. and my feature tree is intact.